All right. So welcome everybody to um, to our lab slash webinar um, focusing on uh, creating a, a fully managed Kubernetes GitOps platform using our Go CD. Um, I'll be hosting today. Uh, I'm Nicholas Mori, a uh, platform engineer uh, by trade, um, passionate about uh, anything DevOps principles wise, uh, currently working at Acuity as a developer advocate, talking about um, anything Argo project related. Um, I have been an Argo CD user for uh, a couple of user now, uh, years now, and um, now I get to focus on um, you know creating content around Argo CD and, and helping other people um, use it and understand it and see the value of uh, of implementing GitOps um, in their infrastructure and in their environment. Um, so to start off with, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about the lab scenario that we're in. So um, in this uh, kind of hour long hands on lab, uh, we'll be entering a scenario or more specifically, I'll be entering a scenario as a um, Kubernetes cluster administrator. So um, in this organization that uh, that we're using for the scenario, the, the developers deploy containerized applications using Helm charts. So um, you're probably already familiar with uh, these concepts of, um, you know, we have manifests that describe how to deploy the application um, into the cluster or what resources to deploy. Um, so the idea is that we have this uh, repo that developers use um, for maintaining these Helm charts in the scenario, and then that these uh, Helm charts are version controlled in that repo. And then the developers deploy them manually to the cluster by running Helm commands. Um, so they've got direct privileged access to the cluster for um, deploying their Helm charts as, a, as changes um, make it to the main branch. So given that scenario, um, this lab is going to walk you through um, implementing Argo CD to begin managing those the deployment of those Helm charts in a declarative fashion. So ultimately, you will end up with a Kubernetes cluster with applications deployed using an Argo CD control plane. Um, so to start off with... Uh, you can think of what to name your organization and your environment. Um, you know, to make it easy, I'm going to name my organization after my GitHub username, Mori-Tech, and I'm going to call my environment staging. Um, so these values are important for uh, the environment that we're going to set up to run the lab. Um, so this includes your organization name is going to be used for setting up uh, an account on the Acuity platform and creating the organization in there. And then the environment name is going to be used for uh, the cluster and, um, and naming things relative to the cluster throughout the environment. Um, and so the other important note here is that if you see any text um, between a less than and greater than symbol, um, this indicates that you should substitute that value with what's whatever relevant to your scenario. So like looking at uh, this repo URL, for example, um, this GitHub username, I'm going to replace that with my GitHub username. Um, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so the prerequisites were mentioned in the, the sign up for the, the webinar, but I'll just reiterate them here. Um, it's expected that you have a GitHub account. Um, this is important for creating the repo that's going to contain the, the Helm charts. Um, so like following along on the scenario, this is where the developers are managing their Helm charts that describe what resources to deploy into Kubernetes. Um, and you can also use that GitHub account for creating the account on the Acuity platform. Um, we'll get more details into that later. Um, and then you'll need the kubectl installed since we'll be interacting with the uh, Kubernetes cluster directly. This is important for being able to run um, certain commands and uh, being able to manipulate the cluster. Um, and so you can either have brought your own Kubernetes cluster where you have um, admin access. Uh, so this is required because we're going to be creating namespace and cluster roles and other um, cluster scoped resources. Um, or you could have uh, you can have Docker and Kind installed on your local machine. And uh, as a part of the lab, we'll walk through creating a cluster with Kind. Um, but you could easily create something with Minikube or K3D. Um, the idea is that 
Ultimately, you just need to have a Kubernetes cluster that has egress traffic allowed from the cluster uh, to the internet. Um, the lab was built on these specific component versions. So a little bit of skew here probably won't matter, but if you're running into um, weird issues, um, uh, if you run in, into any weird issues with uh, with the lab, say like an API version on a manifest isn't working, um, this is a good first place to check. So we're going to um, start out with setting up your environment to kind of mimic the scenario that we're going to work through. Um, so this starts off by creating um, uh, a repo from this uh, repository template that we're working in right now. Um, so if you go to the URL that's, uh, that's posted, um, in the chat there and you, um, land on this, uh, repo, we're going to click use this template, and then we're going to create a, a new repository. And so, uh, I'm going to name this lab or this repository, um, something relevant to the lab. So basically just dropping the, uh, suffix of, um, hyphen template, um, ensuring that I've selected the correct owner here, that I'm creating the repository under the correct account, um, ensuring that uh, it's set to public. And then at this point, you can click uh, create repository from template. Um, and then you'll get uh, a repository that's fresh. Um, it just creates an initial commit to copy everything over from the template. Um, and now we have our repo that um, for the scenario. So in this repo, we've got... Um, a guest book and a portal helm chart. Um, they're, they're pretty simple. Uh, the templates are is that it's deploying a deployment resource and a, a service resource um, as a part of the, the helm chart. And it's exactly the same thing for the, the portal one. Um, and then we have uh, this directory called apps. And this is where we're storing the application manifests um, used in Argo CD to uh, describe how to deploy um, the the helm charts so we have to start off by updating the the repo url and these two files uh, and the destination name so this this describes uh, to the application where to go and get that helm chart from and so since we've created a repository from uh, a template we need to go and update these values uh, so i'm going to go ahead and uh, click the pencil here to um, edit this file, and I'm going to replace GitHub username with my GitHub username, Mori Tech. And then I'm going to update the destination name, which describes um, to what cluster the, uh, the application should deploy the resources, uh, like rendered by the Helm chart. So uh, in my scenario, I'm going to call uh, my cluster staging. So I've updated the repo URL with the correct username, and I've updated the um, the uh, repo name, um, ensuring that that's correct. Um, and yeah, we'll send along the the GitHub URL again, um, and then from there you can just create the template from it. Um, so now that I've updated those two values, we'll commit those changes. We'll uh, we'll give it a relevant commit message. Uh, and then we're going to commit these changes directly to the main branch. Um, and so we can hit just uh, commit changes. Um, and then, so now that we've done that for the guestbook application manifest, we need to go back and update um, the other one as well. So same thing for the um, portal application, we're going to edit this file and update the repo URL to uh, the correct GitHub username, in my case, Mori Tech, and update the destination name to the name of the cluster that you're going to deploy to, the environment name that you chose as part of the scenario. In my case, it's going to be staging. Um, and now that uh, I've made those updates, we're going to commit changes. And now both the application manifests are, um, are accurate to, to your uh, repository after copying the template. Um, 
So now that we have our repo, which contains the, the Helm charts that the developers are using to deploy their applications into the cluster, um, we're going to need a cluster to uh, deploy those applications into. So we'll swap over to uh, a terminal here. And uh, on my local machine, um, I have ensured that Docker is running and that I have access to uh, create containers. So I can test that by running Docker run uh, hello world. And that'll just pull a, a basic image, uh, create a container and ensure that you can actually use Docker on your machine. Um, and from there, I want to make sure that I've got kubectl installed. I do. I want to make sure that I've got the kind binary installed. Uh, I do. Uh, and then from here with, with kind, I can simply create a cluster by running kind create cluster. Uh, and then we're going to specify the name for the cluster to keep it relevant to the scenario. So in my case, I'm going to name the cluster staging as I did um, in the uh, application manifest here. Um, I'm going to also name uh, my cluster that. So now that I've... Uh, got my command ready, kind create cluster, I can hit enter, and it'll start spinning up a, a basic single node um, cluster. Um, so this should be pretty quick, uh, other than pulling the node image, uh, it doesn't take that long to get it set up. Um, and as a part of kind creating the cluster, it's going to uh, automatically set your kubectl context to that new cluster. Um, as we can see here, but uh, just to double check, I'm going to run kubectl get nodes and ensure that uh, I'm seeing the expected nodes. So it should be uh, my cluster name hyphen control plane. Um, and then we're waiting for the, the node to be in the ready status, which I probably just caught this too early. So if I rerun the command, there we go. Uh, my node is ready and it's running my expected version of uh, of uh, Kubernetes. So we've got our repo that contains our Helm charts to deploy our applications. We've got our Kubernetes cluster that is where we're going to deploy the applications to. Um, next, we need to get uh, an instance of Argo CD to be able to uh, control the deployment of those Helm charts into that cluster. So um, this scenario demonstrates deploying applications to uh, a cluster that's external to Argo CD. So for convenience during the lab, we're going to utilize the Acuity platform to get a, a fully featured instance for Argo CD without having to configure a separate cluster and set up UI access. Um, this lab can certainly be done using the open source installation of Argo CD um, by standing up a second cluster, following the Argo CD getting started guide, then setting up an ingress, and then substituting the next section for connecting that cluster. Um, but as I mentioned, we're just going to use the Acuity platform for convenience so that um, we're working with one deployment target and then we have a, a separate control plane. Um, so this is kind of similar to how uh, GitHub is hosting the Helm charts that describe um, which resources or what resources to deploy into Kubernetes. Uh, the Acuity platform is going to host the uh, Argo CD application manifests, which represent how to deploy those resources into the cluster, along with actually hosting Argo CD, which is going to implement the changes on the cluster. Um, so to, to go forward with that, we're going to create uh, an account on the Acuity platform here. So you can follow... Um, uh, the links in the chat there, and then you can click, uh, you'll be presented with the sign in page, I'll click free trial here to end up there. Um, and I'm going to suggest logging in with your GitHub account, since it's essentially a one click um, sign up for the Acuity platform, you can also go ahead and use a, an email address and a password or continue with Google. Um, but just for the convenience during the lab, I'm, I'm going to use GitHub. Uh, so I'm going to authorize a QDIO here on my GitHub account to just be able to do basic um, OAuth. And then I now have an account on the Acuity platform. So uh, the first step, once I have an account, is to create an organization. So this organization is going to be where all of the Argo CD instances are um, kind of uh, contained. And uh, anyone else I invite into my organization can then manage uh, Argo CD instances in there. So from the landing page here, you can click uh, create or join. 
And then you can click uh, new organization in the top right. And from here, I'm going to name my uh, my organization the same as my GitHub username. So uh, Mori Tech, you could follow along doing the same thing or just anything that matches the, the parameters for a valid organization name. Uh, and then we'll hit create. And now I've got an organization. So this means I've got an account and an org on the Acuity platform. And now we need to actually spin up uh, an Argo CD instance. So I'll go over to Argo CD here on the sidebar, and then I can click uh, just create uh, to get my first instance. For the sake of the lab, um, I'm going to suggest calling it cluster manager uh, since that's going to be its purpose um, and it's a valid name, but uh, you could choose whatever name to, to represent your Argo CD instance. Um, this lab follows along on the V25 uh, version of Argo CD. So I'm going to go here under version and I'm going to select the V251 dropdown. And I could choose a specific subversion if I want, but I just want to track um, version 25. So now that I've got my instance name and my version selected, I can click create. And the Acuity platform will go and start provisioning an Argo CD instance for me. Um, so while of the instance is initializing, it typically takes under two minutes. Um, we have a couple of settings to update to prepare it for the rest of the lab. So if we go to um, settings on our Argo CD instance, and under the general section, we scroll down, you you want to find declarative management. And so declarative management enables using the Acuity platform um, with the app of apps pattern or application sets uh, by exposing the in-cluster destination. So um, if you think back to our application manifest where we set the destination to our cluster, um, what we're going to name our cluster, the declarative management option um, exposes in-cluster, meaning that you can deploy application resources um, you can create an application that then deploys application resources into the same cluster that's hosting Argo CD. Um, we'll, I'll work on this later in the lab to demonstrate this. Um, and so for reference, the, the open source installation would enable this as default because you're installing it into a cluster that, that you manage. Um, so after I've clicked enable on declarative management, uh, I'll go and I'll hit save. And then we have one more setting to update, which if we go over to security and access, and then we go to system accounts, we're going to enable the admin account. So by enabling the admin account, we're enabling logging in through the Argo CD UI, and we're getting a user that um, getting the password for the admin user. So if I click uh, the toggle for the admin account and click confirm, um, It'll go ahead and provision the admin account. And if I click set password here, uh, I can copy the password that was generated by creating the admin account. And so if I scroll back up to the top here, uh, I can see that my instance is up and running and that it's in a healthy status. So I can go ahead and click the URL for that instance to open up the Argo CD UI. And then I can log in with the admin user and the password that I just copied. And then here we go. We have Argo CD. So we have a repo with Helm charts. We've got a Kubernetes cluster. And now we have Argo CD. So the last step here for setting up the environment is that in order for Argo CD to deploy the, those charts from the repo into the cluster, we have to connect it. Um, which on the Acuity platform, um, we're using an agent-based architecture. So for connecting the external cluster, we I will provision uh, an agent, and then I will deploy that into the cluster. So we can uh, go through this by, I'll go back to the uh, Acuity dashboard here, and then um, for my Argo CD instance, I'll go to clusters, and I'll click uh, connect a cluster. And then that same name that I used in the uh, application manifest for uh, the Helm charts, I'm going to use here. So I named my cluster staging. And I'll enter that in, and then we can hit connect cluster. And this will go and provision an agent on the platform, and then it'll present you with the install command for that agent. Um, so if I scroll down here, I can click copy to clipboard, and then done. 
And then I can switch back to my terminal. And uh, before installing the, um, the agent into the cluster or running the agent install command, I'm going to double check that I'm connected to the correct context on kubectl, uh, since it's pretty important to make sure that I'm deploying the agent into, my, into the correct cluster. So I'm going to run kubectl config current context. And I'm looking for, since I'm using kind, the cluster name will be prefixed with kind, and then the name I chose for the cluster. So it looks like I'm connected to the right context. So then I can go ahead and I can paste uh, the agent install command, which is going to pull the manifest from the Acuity platform and apply to the cluster using kubectl apply. So I'll hit enter here, and you can see that it created a number of resources. Uh, we can go check on the, the status of the deployment by getting the pods in the Acuity namespace. So I'll run kubectl get pods and then uh, specify the Acuity namespace. And here we can see the various components that were deployed for the agent, and we can see the status for them. So we're essentially waiting for all of the pods to be in the running status with um, all of them ready. This typically takes about a minute. So uh, if I just rerun that command, I can check their status again. And you can see that they're all running, but we have two left that we're waiting for them to become ready, which I bet if I run again, uh, it's officially all running. And so if I go back to the Acuity platform here, I can see that um, my cluster agent is up and running, it's healthy. And I can see the versions that are installed um, into my cluster. So now that we have um, our repo with our Helm charts that the developers in the scenario are using to deploy their applications, I have a cluster that um, is connected to an Argo CD instance hosted on the Acuity platform. Um, I have the full environment ready to actually run through the lab. Um, so we're, re we're ready to start using Argo CDD to deploy those Helm charts into the cluster. Um, so if, if we think back to the scenario, um, before the introduction of Argo CD, the developers were manually deploying any changes to these Helm charts uh, into the cluster. So they were running um, Helm commands to uh, on a locally checked out version of the repo to go and deploy the changes into the cluster. Uh, so we'll demonstrate um, using an Argo CD application to now declaratively tell Argo CD how to deploy those Helm charts, uh, removing this need to be running the Helm commands directly. Um, so we'll start by creating an application to deploy the this guestbook Helm chart into the cluster. So I'll go back to the Argo CD UI and I'll click new app. And then since we're working with um, this application manifest here already, I'm going to click edit as YAML. And then I will copy this manifest and paste it into, uh, into the field here. And so you can see this describes the name of our application, which is guestbook. Um, it describes the source to pull the, um, the resources that the application should manage from. Uh, so in this case, that's uh, my GitHub repo that I copied from the, the repo template. Um, where in that repo to search for um, what to deploy, which in our case is the guestbook directory here, which contains the, uh, the Helm chart. And then what revision um, of that repo to be tracking. So in this case, we're tracking the head of the repo, which is the, um, the default branch, which is currently named main. Um, and then we're telling uh, Argo CD where to deploy these resources into. So we're telling it to deploy into the guestbook namespace in the staging cluster. And then finally, we're setting a sync policy here that states that it should automatically create the namespace for that application um, when on the initial deployment. So if I click save here, it'll translate all of the YAML into the different fields in the wizard. So we can see that application name before, uh, that auto create namespace sync policy option, um, and that source repo saying to pull from this repo in this path on this revision. 
Um, so now that I've uh, I've pasted the GAML, I can hit create, and uh, Argo CD will go ahead and create this application, um, check the source for it, and then determine what resources should be deployed in the cluster. Now, by default here, you'll see that the application status is missing and out of sync. So this is indicating that the resources for this application haven't actually been deployed into the destination cluster yet, and that the uh, desired state in the source, in the, in the repo, uh, is out of sync with the live state that's actually in the cluster. So we'll, we'll click on this card here, and we'll um, take a look at... Uh, what was rendered for this application. So um, it's gone ahead and it's rendered the Helm chart to determine what resources to deploy into the cluster. And you can see that it's created a service uh, and a deployment um, for the guestbook application, which if we go back and we look at the guestbook Helm chart, we can see here that that matches the, the two template resources that we're expecting. So, um, from here, uh, we'll be able to synchronize this application, which will instruct Argo CD to actually go and create those resources. Um, if we wanna see exactly what it's creating, we can click on app diff on the top and um, it shows the service manifest and the deployment manifest that it's gonna go and deploy into the cluster. So I want to uh, initiate a sync of this application to go and create those resources in the cluster. So I'll click sync and then I'll click synchronize and uh, Argo CD will go and work its magic and actually deploy those resources into the cluster. You'll see the resource tree here starts expanding uh, almost immediately showing the uh, resources that are owned by the top level resources. So the uh, deployment has created a replica set that has created a pod. And while the pod was progressing, the app health is also progressing, showing that there is um, activity um, in the application that something's changing in the cluster um, that is trying to do something. But now that all the resources are exist in the cluster and are healthy, we can see that our application is synced uh, and that our app health is also healthy. Um, so th this is great. We now have an application managing the deployment of the guestbook Helm chart instead of, uh, in this scenario, instead of a developer going and deploying those changes um, via the Helm command directly against the cluster, we now have Argo CD instructing, um, instructed how to deploy that Helm chart based on the application we created. So what happens when a developer wants to deploy a new image tag though? They're used to uh, getting their changes into main and then checking out the repo locally and running the Helm command. Well, now they'll be able to trigger a sync of the application after they've made their changes in main. So I'll demonstrate this by going back to uh, my repo here. And um, from the root of the repo, I'm gonna go to the guestbook Helm chart and I'm going to go to the values.yaml. And I'm gonna update this image tag from 01 to 02 to kind of illustrate what, uh, what happens after a developer has made their change and got it onto the main branch. So I'll edit this file, I'll change uh, 01 to 02, and then I will commit changes. Uh, I'll give it uh, a relevant commit message to describe what I've changed. So I'm going to bump the, the tag to 02 on guestbook. And I'm going to commit those changes directly to the main branch, since that's what the application in Argo CD is tracking. So if I click commit changes here, um, and then I'll go back to the Argo CD UI and the um, Argo CD guestbook application. Um, the default sync interval is three minutes. So at any point while I'm saying this sentence, it might update to show that it's out of sync. Um, otherwise, I can go and I can click the refresh button to um, request that Argo CD goes and checks for any changes in the cluster and in the repo uh, for the application. So as I click refresh here, it's going to go out and find that there's a new revision on the uh, on the branch that we're tracking for the application. So you can see here, um, 
that uh, there's a new um, status that it's out of sync. And if I click this button here, um, if I if I click the revision, it'll go and it'll take me to the specific commit that it wants to sync for, um, which is where I've updated the tag from 01 to 02. Um, and then we can also go and check uh, right in Argo CD the, the diff that it wants to apply for the application that's out of sync. And so if I click uh, app diff here in the top bar, and then I'm going to click compact diff just to make it easier to see what's changed. And we can see that the image for the deployment, so guestbook deployment up here, the image for the deployment has updated from 01 to 02, what we would expect based on the, the change that we made in the repo. Uh, and then, so as a developer, um, I've gone and I've made my change in the repo, I've updated the image tag. And now when I actually want to deploy that into the environment, make a, make a change in the cluster, um, I'll go and I'll hit uh, sync. So this would be kind of analogous to um, if I was running the Helm command directly uh, to do a manual um, trigger of the deployment into the environment, I can do the same thing by running a sync on the application, manually triggering that sync. So when I hit synchronize here, um, we'll see the deployment create a new replica set, which creates a new pod with a new image tag. Um, the app was briefly progressing there as the new pod is spun up and the old one is tear, torn down. Um, and now I've, now I have, uh, the latest version of my Helm chart deployed into the environment. Um, so, so this is great. We can go and, um, and like, uh, as we make changes in the main branch, we can see it in Argo CD, we can see why it's out of sync, and then we can choose when to trigger um, that deployment into the environment. Um, but what if we don't wanna have that manual step? Like if we think back to the scenario, um, for a change to make it to the main branch, it's probably already gone through like a pull request and approval process, and then it's deployed into main. So at that point, you're probably confident that this change should be deployed into the cluster. So to remove that manual step, we can enable auto sync for the application under the sync policy. So we'll do so for the guestbook application here by going to app details, and then under the sync policy, we'll do enable auto sync. And while we're here, we're also going to enable the self heal functionality of the sync policy, um, which I'll, I'll demonstrate uh, later. So we, we've enabled the, the sync policy, that's great. So let's go and, and run an example of that. So, um, we have our guestbook application deploying our Helm chart from the repo and it's gonna automatically do it. So let's go make a change. Um, if we go back to the repo here and we go from the guestbook help chart and we go back to the values file that we edited last time, um, I'll go and I'll update the replica count from uh, one to two, uh, effectively scaling our, our application. So I'll, I'll commit the changes here and uh, We'll give it a nice relevant commit message to, to describe what I've done. Um, so we're gonna bump the guestbook to two replicas, commit that change directly to the main branch, just like we did with the image tag update. Um, now, if I go back to my Argo CD note, uh, application, um, again, it, in any time within three minutes here, it's gonna automatically detect that it's out of sync. Um, and then it's going to uh, apply those changes automatically now that we've enabled the automatic sync policy. So uh, for the sake of the lab here, I can click refresh, which will trigger it to go check for any revision change. And then once it's detected that, it's going to automatically apply it. So watch, I'll click uh, refresh. And then it's detected uh, a new revision that it's out of sync. And then that new revision requested two replicas and that's happened now. Uh, my replica set is now deploying two pods. And if we go back um, to see how this, uh, the details of the sync operation, I can click uh, the sync status at the top here and it'll describe um, why, it, why it did this sync. 
So we can see that the revision that it's synced for, which if I click on that, it'll take me directly to the commit that it uh, it wanted to sync. So we where I updated the replica set from one to two. Um, and then it'll say that it's initiated by the automatic sync policy. So as the new revision was uh, detected, it was automatically synced um, based on the policy set for the application. And then we can see the result of the sync operation and that the deployment, uh, the guestbook deployment resource was configured with the new replica set um, number and that the guestbook service was unchanged during the sync. So this is great. As uh, changes are made to our Helm chart in our repository, Argo CD is now automatically syncing those into our destination cluster. So if we if we think back to the scenario in in uh, this organization, everybody has direct and privileged access to the cluster. So users may apply changes to the cluster that are outside of the repo due to this over provisioned access. For example, somebody might um, apply changes to the cluster, um, uh, like apply a change to a Helm chart and then deploy that to the cluster without first pushing it to the repo. Potentially, they, they just forgot to, to go and go through that um, pull request process and they, then they had just applied it. So now we have configuration drift in our cluster. Uh, our desired state in the repo no longer reflects the live state in the cluster. So by enabling the self-heal functionality on an application, you can tell Argo CD to reconcile any changes to the application resources that deviate from the repo. So I'll, I'll demonstrate this by going to this deployment resource here, the guestbook deployment. And say somebody went into the cluster and they've gone and they've deleted that guestbook deployment. Maybe they thought they were on dev and um, deleted it in the wrong environment. Well, because of self-heal, Argo CD is going to go and um, automatically recreate this deployment after I delete it. So almost as fast as I can hit delete here and enter the guestbook um, name, enter the name of the resource to confirm the deletion, um, Argo CD will detect that it's out of sync. So briefly out of sync here and that missing and go and recreate that deployment resource, which then creates its replica set based on the Helm chart and deploys the two pods. Um, this means that any changes that are made to the cluster um, that potentially shouldn't have been um, are reconciled by Argo CD so that you can be confident that your desired state in the repo reflects um, the live state in your cluster. So at this point, um, we have uh, set up our environment. We are now managing um, the application Helm charts using Argo CD. Um, we're uh, using applications to declaratively define um, how to deploy these Helm charts into the cluster. So like that's one of the benefits of using Argo CD is that um, you are now codifying the deployment process for the Helm charts in the application spec. If we go and we, we look at the manifest for the application, we have said clearly that we want to deploy this Helm chart from this revision into this cluster using this sync policy. So now that we're, we're codifying that, it would make sense to manage that in Git and the same way that as changes are made to the Helm charts in Git and they should be applied to the cluster, um, changes to the application manifests in Git should also be applied to, to Argo CD as they're made. So um, at this point, we're going to create um, what is called an app of apps um, application. So this is essentially going to create an application that is then going to create other application manifests so that they can be managed declaratively uh, in version control in Git. So I'll demonstrate this by uh, going to the applications pane or uh, dashboard and creating a new application. Um, we're going to edit it as YAML. And then I will go back to, to the repo here. And at the root of the repo, there's uh, an app of apps uh, manifest. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this YAML and bring it back over to the Argo CD UI and paste it in there. So we're saying that we're going to create an application called 
applications. Um, and we're going to deploy the resources from this application into the in-cluster destination. So if you remember back to setting up the Argo CD instance, we enabled declarative management. Um, this exposed that in-cluster destination, um, allowing us to create a higher level uh, application that then is going to deploy um, other application resources into the, the platform that's hosting Argo CD. Um, so we're telling it to go to this repo URL, which similar to at the beginning of the lab, we need to replace the GitHub username. So I'll update it to, to my GitHub account here, and I'll just confirm that the repo URL is correct, uh, that the repo name is correct in the URL. And then it's also going to track the head revision of the repo, just like the other applications. And then we're pointing it to this apps directory, which if you remember is where we updated those application manifests at the beginning. So it's gonna look at this directory to determine what resources to deploy. So uh, as I hit save here, it's gonna translate those settings into the uh, fields in the UI. And we can see that it's checking the apps path from our repo. Um, so I'll hit create here so that we can see what resources it's gonna generate. Um, so we now have our new applications card and that the, the status is healthy, but it's out of sync. So let's go look into that. Um, you can see here that this top level applications uh, application is now creating two uh, application resources. So it wants to create a guestbook application and a portal application. Um, our guestbook application already exists in the cluster. That's what we created imperatively at the beginning. Um, and then in addition to that, it's going to deploy a new application manifest for that portal Helm chart that's also in our repo. So if we if we look at the app diff here, we can get a little more details on that. Um, so for this uh, guestbook application that we already created earlier, the only change that the app of apps is going to make is updating uh, or adding an annotation to the um, to the application that indicates that it's now managed by this higher level application. So this is kind of getting into the, the technical details of how um, uh, applications track resources, um, but just know that the only change that this app of apps is gonna make to that existing guestbook application is just uh, connecting it as, um, as a child of the parent application. And then you can see the new um, portal application that it's gonna deploy uh, into Argo CD, which is then going to deploy the portal Helm chart from the repo, just the same way that we're deploying the guestbook uh, Helm chart from the repo. Uh, so I'll close out this pane and I can go and I can hit sync and then I can hit synchronize. Um, and from here, it'll go and it'll add those applications to Argo CD. And from this, uh, kind of top level view of all of the app of apps, I can click into uh, the individual application resources by just clicking um, uh, the link box on that resource. So if I click on the guestbook application, it's gonna bring me to, to its page. And we can see here in the sync status that um, nothing was changed as a part of our uh, deployment of the app of apps. It merely just took ownership over this uh, application resource in Argo CD. But if we go back to the applications dashboard, we can see the portal uh, Helm chart application, which because we didn't enable auto sync on this application, it's still waiting for them to get deployed into the cluster uh, the same way the guestbook application was at the beginning of the lab. Um, so I can simply uh, click sync and then synchronize to get my application deployed into the cluster. And we can even see the app diff here, which would describe uh, the two resources that it wanted to deploy, this service resource and this deployment resource, which then shows the whole resource tree all the way down to the pod and the replica set and, and everything. So as a developer, they can come in here and they can see um, all of the resources that are generated by their Helm chart. Um, and so we've reached uh, the, the end of the, the prepared lab here. We've gone through and we've set up an environment that contains um, a repo, which has our Helm charts and our application manifests. We've created a Kubernetes cluster 
We've spun up uh, an Argo CD instance on the Acuity platform. And then we've gone and just start, started ending. Um, uh, we've started deploying our Helm charts using Argo CD applications. Um, removing that uh, from the scenario, there's no longer that manual process of developers running Helm commands to get their changes into the cluster. We've all declaratively um, defined this deployment process and then put it into Git and we can now manage it there. Um, so before we end, it, uh, end out here, we have about another 15 minutes. So um, if you wanna ask any questions in the Q and A functionality of, uh, of the webinar, um, we'll be happy to answer them um, in the last few minutes here. Uh, outside of the webinar, um, uh, we're available on the CNCF Slack channel. So uh, feel free to find me, uh, Nicholas Mori, on the CNCF Slack and ping me with any questions that you might have about Argo CD. Uh, you can also find me on, on Twitter and on Twitch. Uh, both are um, at Mori Tech, where on Twitch, sometimes I stream about Argo CD, setting up um, weird scenarios, testing out new functionality and trying to break things. Um, so we'll just go and look into the Q&A to see if anybody has any questions.